Today I woke up and thought, how can I make my life exponentially worse? Well, I could do the video doing all of those viewer suggested operating systems on that Pentium M piece of trash. Eh, nah, that's too much work. I could do another review video, those always do pretty well. Eh, still too much work for today. I could go and get a real job. I've got it! Windows 10 on a Pentium M. Fuck. I wasn't overly planning on doing this again, but recently I was made aware of a post on Elon Musk's bird hellhole about Windows 10 22H2 working on a Pentium M using Windows 10 1709's preboot environment. I had no idea that this was a thing you could do, but needless to say, I was intrigued by this, and I knew I had to try it on something. Don't worry, I'm still gonna do the operating system video of all of the stuff that everybody suggested on the Ubuntu video, but there are just a few comments on that video, so it's still taking me some time to actually put that video together. I already know that the hardware support is going to be the same. There's still going to be no proper GPU support, so I'm not expecting this experience to be overly good. But I still was just very curious if this would even work at all. Fortunately, a pre-made ISO was already linked on the post about this, so I literally just had to put it on a flash drive, like normal. So I'm going to be using the Inspiron 1300 again. I think I've used this enough for people to know the specs, but just in case you haven't seen them, here you go. Actually, I did replace the hard drive. Turns out the other one is dying. Whoops. So yeah, this currently has nothing on it. Not that it matters, because this install of Windows more than likely probably isn't going to stay on this computer. Now I expect this probably will run worse since Windows 10 22H2 is several years newer than 1709, but I'm more so gonna try similar things to what I did in the other video because that's pretty much the only point of comparison that I have. Since this is a modified ISO, this is pretty much any version of Windows 10 that you could want, short of LTSC, but I figured I would install IoT Enterprise anyway, just for fun. <laughs> I have no other reason. I can't activate it or anything, but who cares really? I don't think it matters on this computer. And yeah, the EULA and everything is the same as 22H2, so this is actually 22H2, it's not 1709. And yeah, otherwise the install is just Windows 10. I'm sure it would be faster if I had an SSD in this computer. I know for the last two videos I've done with it, people have been screaming at me to do that, but I don't have one, so sorry. The install definitely took its fair share of time, but eventually we got to the out-of-box experience. Kind of crazy to see it was that easy. Or is it? Because as soon as I got on the out-of-box experience, when I actually tried to do anything, it got stuck on just a moment for a while. And then eventually I got a white screen of death and then an error. Uh-oh, that's not good. <laughs> Something went wrong. I tried it again, but still, same problem. It just refused to load it. Well, at least that's why there's a skip button, I guess. The computer was not loving itself during this time. Obviously, it was quite laggy, and several of the buttons just were completely unresponsive. The interesting thing was the hard drive was not the problem in this case. It seems like already this thing's CPU and memory, or one of the two, or maybe both, are being taxed right now, which is not a good sign. It took almost 10 minutes just to click I don't have internet. And even after that was done, again, something went wrong. And it just kept happening, and eventually I got to the point where I couldn't skip it. I was just stuck on something went wrong, this time OOBE local. I tried powering down and restarting a computer just to see if maybe by some chance that would fix it, but no, no it didn't. Man, so close, yet so far. Well, what I decided to do this time was remake my media, but this time in Rufus, select pretty much every option to configure the machine beforehand in the hopes that it would skip as much of the out-of-box experience as possible, since none of it seemed to want to load. I don't normally do this, because it's not really necessary, obviously, but I really didn't know what else to do. And to my amazement, that actually worked. We completely bypassed the out-of-box experience. It made a user account, and it's signing in. 
Sheesh. Obviously, throughout this whole process, it was taking its sweet time. I would say it probably took 20 minutes from booting up before I actually got to the desktop. But patience paid off because here we are. This is Windows 10 22H2 actually running on this old piece of trash. The first thing I did was open Task Manager so that I could have my suspicions immediately confirmed. This processor was not loving itself. In fact, the rest of the resource usage, RAM and hard drive, didn't actually look that bad. It was just the processor that was the problem. Well, I didn't expect it would work, but I tried Snappy Driver Installer on it anyway just to see if the graphics driver would change anything because I also had no Wi-Fi. It turns out the Wi-Fi driver was not installed out of the box. Which is actually funny, because this Wi-Fi card I put in this computer so that Linux would work, because Linux didn't like the card it had. So I just can't win. Even after installing the driver, it still just didn't work. So I decided to just do what I did in the Ubuntu video. Swap the Wi-Fi card back to the old one, and it worked immediately. Since the Wi-Fi was working, one of the first things I decided to do was run all the Windows updates on this install. Obviously, since I don't need to worry about it trying to update to a newer version, I can just actually use the Windows Updater in settings. I don't think this actually breaks anything by installing updates. So, we'll just do it, because why not? This process definitely took its fair share of time, and just like earlier, the CPU was not loving itself during this process. Now because I was really bored and wanted more suffering, something I decided to do while that was running was to pull out this piece of trash and install it on this too. Because I have no sanity, of course. This is a Intel Celeron M laptop, basically the same era, except it's a much worse processor. And I had to know if it would run on it, because I didn't know what else to try on the Pentium M1 anyway, so we might as well have at least some point of comparison. I upgraded the memory to two gigabytes on this computer, so that at least the RAM wouldn't be a problem, because it had 256 megs before. Oh yeah, I forgot this was in the toilets video. It still has this install on it. I didn't actually think it was even going to work on this computer to be honest, because I remember trying this and HP's BIOSes are kind of stupid and they often don't like modern versions of Windows, but on this, it actually did work. It's just that it took forever to load. I'm pretty sure it was probably loading at USB 1.1 speeds since it took like 15 minutes to load, I had to go do something else. It was way slower than the Dell. I think this is just an HP thing, because when I did that Windows 2007 video with the HP DV8000, it was the same problem. So this is just a case of HP's BIOSes being crap. But sure enough, after waiting some time, it actually did load. I really kind of wasn't actually expecting it to work on this piece of crap, but... Again, for fun, I figured I would install the same edition and everything. It's not like activation really matters to me. <laughs> This is not staying on here, so it's probably fine. This definitely also took its fair share of time to install properly, but eventually got it. And something I noticed right away, this was running at native res. I almost freaked out at first because I thought it was actually running with a graphics driver. But it turns out for some reason this thing lets you do 1280 by 100 without a GPU driver. Why can't the other one do that? What the hell, Dell? All right, well, whatever. Same process again, and this time, there's no Wi-Fi card for it to be tripped up over because this computer doesn't have one. Apparently, it also picked up a couple other drivers, but I don't really care about any of them. The only one I care about is the video, and I think we already know how that goes. Since this thing didn't have Wi-Fi of any capacity, but did have a Realtek Ethernet chipset, I figured I would just plug this thing into Ethernet so that I can also update it, just like I did the other computer. Just so we can get, again, a fair comparison. Actually, who am I kidding? This is Celeron. This is not going to be fair at all. Anyway, with all that out of the way, I turned my attention back to the Dell, which was... not going well. A lot of the time this thing was idling, it was spent using most of its resources. I thought maybe it was really that terrible on this, until I checked system settings when I realized this thing just started updating on its own again. So geez, that was a jump scare I guess. Not that it's overly good even while idling. I decided to try web browsing again, just like I did in the last video, not that I expected it to end well. Apparently this computer will soon stop receiving Microsoft Edge updates because its hardware is no longer supported, which is kind of interesting, I don't know what exactly is not supported anymore about it. 
Probably for the better though, because as I predicted, yeah, it's not good on this thing. Like even on the other install, I think it was okay. It at least kind of worked, but like on this, I, mean, I guess it does kind of work on this, but it's definitely not very good. The big problem again is the CPU is just completely slammed on this thing. I wonder if some of this would maybe be better if this thing had any kind of graphics on it so it didn't have that extra overhead on the CPU, but... And I tried YouTube, which just did not work on this. I could not get a video to really load on this at all. Even on the other install, I was able to at least kind of get it to work, but there was nothing on this. It ended up just endlessly buffering. The computer basically ran out of RAM at this point. I tried Firefox on this as well just to see if there was any difference, but still no luck. YouTube just did not work on this computer. It was just endlessly buffering. And just web browsing in general just really was not a good experience on this computer, even compared to the other installs that I've done on it. In fact, doing a whole lot of really anything on this, surprise, surprise, is not good. Even basic things like Microsoft Office, something I was able to do on the last install, while it works on this computer, it uses a ton of the processor and almost all of this computer's memory. I wonder how much some of this would perform better if this computer did have any kind of graphics support and it wasn't trying to run basically off the processor. I mean, I guess we'll never know because I don't have a Pentium M with a dedicated GPU, so oh well. Hell, I didn't even really honestly get around to installing a lot of programs on this other than Office and a web browser because, well, I couldn't download anything. The internet's too slow on it. So I was basically limited to built-in Windows applications just to try and see how this computer did. And most of them, again, surprise, surprise, I think you're noticing a bit of a theme here. Uh, this was not good. This was not a good experience. In fact, the Photos app crashed so hard when I tried to crop an image that I actually had to fully power down the computer and restart it because it just locked up that hard. Whenever it's not the processor, it's always something else, even though it's almost always the processor. This slow old hard drive isn't helping either. I think this is also a 4200 RPM hard drive. And this is where I think having some kind of SSD probably would at least help a little bit because this hard drive is terrible, which means that application load times obviously are just not good. Again, like I said earlier, when it's not the CPU that's being pegged at 100%, it's the hard drive that's being pegged at 100%. So it's just hard to win with this computer. Finally, I wanted to do a boot up test, not that I have anything to really compare it to other than Linux, I guess. While it booted to the desktop relatively quickly, the hard drive was still chugging for two more minutes afterwards. It ended up being almost three and a half minutes before it finally stopped. All right, well, I'm curious how this computer is gonna do. Obviously, if the Pentium M couldn't do things well, then it's not looking good for the Celeron, that's for dang sure. And yeah, I don't really know what I expected, to be honest. This obviously was even worse. I mean, just to put it in perspective, it took five minutes just to load Google. I think that says something about this computer. It didn't even use that much else of the system, it was just the processor that just was obviously not enjoying life at all. I didn't even try to load YouTube on this one, since I think we know how well that would have gone. In fact, this thing's CPU is basically just sitting at 100% all the time doing anything. It's actually kind of impressive how terrible this is. I mean, again, I don't really know what I was expecting. This is technically unsupported software, considering there had to be a workaround to actually make it work. For some reason, this computer must have not been on long enough for all the built-in applications to be updated to the Windows 11 ones. So there were still a lot of the old media players and the Photos app. So as a result, they didn't take that long to load on this computer. I was actually kind of surprised. But yeah, I don't know what I was expecting with this, to be honest. Finally, again, just for fun, I did a boot up test. Interestingly, the load times on the HP were actually faster than the Dell by a lot. It was almost a minute faster. I honestly didn't think there would be much of a difference because while this laptop does have a 5400 RPM hard drive, it's a dying 5400 RPM hard drive, but I guess it does make a difference. 
So yeah, there we go. What did we learn? Well, we learned that I have no sanity, of course. Here's the specs of both computers again, just to compare the two. I'm not really sure why I did this, to be honest, other than curiosity. I'm definitely not going to be leaving this install on the Dell, that's for sure. It's just obviously not good. I mean, again, I don't know what I was expecting. This is technically unsupported on this computer's hardware. It obviously was never going to end well. Even if there are workarounds to make it work, that doesn't mean that you should do them. 